Hi, this is Professor Brinson, and welcome to episode 12 of the Note Card Review. This will be a short one. I just wanted to provide this information about determining bond polarity strictly by the numbers. This information seems to have helped clarify the issue for several students um, and help them determine when they're looking at a bond, is it polar or nonpolar? Okay. To recap, polarity is strictly determined by comparing the electronegativity of the two elements that are being bonded together. That's represented here by delta En. Okay. Um, the, this is not something where you need to memorize the electronegativity of the numbers, not for this class. Uh, so unless you're getting deeper into chemistry, you don't need that. Um, the thresholds that are generally accepted for the differences between polar, nonpolar, and ionic bonds uh, are shown here ranging from 0 to 0.4 for nonpolar covalent bonds to anything over uh, about 1.5 for an ionic bond with polar covalent uh, landing in the middle, of course. Okay. What this means for us here is if we're looking at the common bonds found in biomolecules such as nitrogen, oxygen, um, or carbon, hydrogen, we've got a clear list of the three most common nonpolar bonds um, and then all of the polar bonds. Okay? Uh, in addition to the three nonpolar bonds listed here, any monoatomic molecular bond like carbon, carbon, or hydrogen, hydrogen uh, is going to be nonpolar. Okay? So carbon, hydrogen, sulfur, hydrogen, sulfur, carbon. Those are our common nonpolar, uh, non-monoatomic bonds. Polar, anything involving oxygen, it's generally going to be polar. So nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen. Those are our common uh, polar bonds. And if you look at the electronegativity here, you'll see that the strongest of these common ones, uh, oxygen, hydrogen, is so polar that it is nearly ionic by these thresholds. So if you think about this in a broader perspective, um, it makes sense that water and, and hydroxyl molecules uh, are going to disassociate very readily. This is nearly an ionic bond already. It's barely hanging on to um, the hydrogen uh, proton to keep that proton um, with the oxygen and it releases it very easily. Hopefully that was helpful for those of you who uh, like this way of thinking about the bond polarity and for all of you I hope this clarifies any confusion about certain ones like nitrogen hydrogen that uh, we haven't discussed very often.